Hi, and welcome to this lecture about how to deal with the children's emotions. This is part one out of two, and the next lecture will be on this subject will be broadcasted here on our YouTube channel the 2nd of June. Please like and follow us to get updates on our upcoming events. And if you have any questions, you can write them in the chat and we'll try to answer them after the presentation. And with that said, I give the floor to you, Marina. Welcome. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Magnus. And thank you, audience, that you um, decide to spend time with us and talk about uh, children's emotions. And uh, our subjects we will talk about children's emotions about um, age uh, about uh, two point half until six years old. So it's specific time when, uh, if you parents, you understand that uh, it's full of emotions. Kids. Uh, um, still cannot express themselves using words. Sometimes they don't understand what they want on self. And we want to be good parents and we want to understand them. As a result, uh, kids full of emotions and it's like uh, matches, uh, sparks, and we also full of emotions. So it's quite a specific period. And uh, as Magnus said, we're planning to uh have two meetings first lecture how to deal with children's emotions and another lecture how to teach a child to understand uh, accept and control their emotions and logically we can start uh, from the second one so how to do with emotions uh it's logically but um i want you to think about uh i want you to think about this moment if we're talking about how to do something it means we ourselves can do this so we understand our emotions we understand uh, uh, where emotions place in uh, personality structure at least we know five minimum five types of emotion management and uh, we know how to compare children's age and emotions and we answer ourselves to questions can emotions be controlled or not so if you know all this uh, answer all these questions i think you can <laughs> yeah, you can now go to your kids and play with them and spend your time better but um, uh, come back please on second lecture uh, it will be second june but today we will try to answer on these five questions and we'll go through them and try to find what we know about uh, this uh, answer of these five questions and my aim my goal of this lecture it's a very simple one i am <clears throat> try to explain you that it's very important to learn to separate uh, your emotions from your child's emotions. It's very simple to say, but as I said before, in practice, it's not easier in the moment when emotions explode. And uh, I want you to think about this, that very important to learn to separate your problems from your child's problems. And what I want you to think about I want you to think about the child has no problems, uh, no problems at all, but child has development tasks. This is very important information. And I believe that all the lecture, I will try to build like, you know, sometimes we think that child, uh, kids, it's some person that, sometimes they don't treat them as a person, uh, sometimes uh, personality. Uh, sometimes we thought that uh, they want only some sweets, some chocolates or some online games, but it's not true. Child, it's already personality, maybe not grow up personality, a personality like a seed inside, yes? Uh, but really, child have only one um, option to give enough feedback if their task of development personality is solved or not or how it's solved uh, using emotions so emotions is only one way for child under six years old to let us know that uh, child succeed or fails to solve their development task of this age so this is very important uh, to to know about this and um, 
if you know the task of a child development and the each period and we will touch to age period in this lecture then we will we can create uh, uh, conditions or environment for development of personality and this is means that we will remove at least quite a lot of negative emotions from our life. So that's why I think it's very important not only talk about emotions, I make uh, our conversation today a little bit wider. So we will talk about personality and part of where is emotions inside personality. And I uh, say to you about my goal for today election. And uh, now I think it will be honest if you will uh, create your own goal for this meeting, for this lecture. Why it's important? Because, um, you know, sometimes we just, um, um, you're looking for something, but we don't understand what we want. And uh, it's very important that, um, uh, our brain construct uh, like, you know, I don't want to say our brain construct like Google. Uh, it's not, not good, of course, comparison. But if you put a, a question in Google, we immediately have an answer. And we can see that, no, I don't want this. And we correct our question. So our brain working more or less the same. So if you ask a question to your brain, how to solve this problem, how to find answer for those questions. Uh, reality shows us that as with time, we will get an answer. So please, if you're watching uh, this uh, uh, video on <coughs> record, put on pause and write uh, your goal. What uh, answer you're looking for? If you're watching now, also spend a few minutes, I will now put on pause 30 seconds and just write your goal. Why are you looking, uh, what you're looking for? What kind of question you want to uh, find? What kind of problem you want to solve watching this video? Please do this. It's really very important and it will be very effective for you, first of all. So I hope you've done this. It's very important, and uh, very important. You will do this. You you can share this in chat, but you can most important if you write this on your notebook or piece of uh, paper or whenever. It's very important to do this. Okay, I hope you've done this, and we will continue. Um, first of all, we'll talk about when we start talking about emotions, we will meet a lot of paradox. Paradox, it's something that not, we cannot solve this using only logic. Um, we, uh, we, when we're talking about emotions, we go to inside irrational zone. Um, <clears throat> so one side, nowadays, we have a lot of information about emotions. For example, we have lots of information about bio, bio biochemistry of emotions, yes? And this information well known, lots of researches, lots of articles we have. But maybe if we'll try to go this way, maybe it will be too difficult for now and uh, for this lecture and maybe not really useful because we have a lot of data about biochemistry of emotions, a lot of information, but how to use this information when you're a parent and when you have a child two and a half years old, three years old, and it's shouting right now. So it's probably a little bit complicated. So one paradox, we know quite a lot, but we don't know how to use this information practically sometimes. Uh, another option can be very simple. Uh, 
if you study psychology and maybe you meet some classification of emotions, most, uh, most simplest classification when um, we're talking about emotions, it's uh, positive and negative emotions. Yes, it's very easy to say this is emotions positive, this is emotions negative. But I want you to think about that especially we will need this our second lecture that uh, emotions better not uh, divide on positive and negative why uh, i propose think about all emotions are useful all emotions for each emotion exist time and place so even anger can be useful even uh, fears can be useful uh, for certain place and certain time so we will talk about this in our second lecture and uh, so this classification is very easy but it's also not working sometimes you can meet uh, uh, when emotions divide internal and external emotions usually if we're talking about this classification we're talking about motivation i think you understand that motivation connect very closely with emotions and motivation it's such a construct in our psychology our personality that we will not move out of sofa if we will have no motivation and motivation based on emotions so also some psychologists said that motivation can be uh, internal such a curiosity and can be external it's also connected with fears because if i frighten and i can do lots of things i agree with me and um, also, you can see that emotions can be divided on emotions and feelings. Emotions in some sense very short of time and quite um, bright, you know, very, very strong. Our feelings, it's uh, deeper and uh, they uh, last longer. For example, you can anger, it can be emotions, uh, uh, love, it can be feeling and also uh, fears it can be only emotions because you cannot live uh, based on fears for a long long time and also emotions can be um, like what we have based on our animal uh, nature our feelings it's something that become make us a human being so feelings it's like sympathy empathy its ability to um, support other person that is not me so don't be egoist this is feeling and it can be educated it also can be good for parents to know that feelings it's something to very important to grow sorry so what I tried to say, we can uh, ask for help from Immanuel Kant, it's um, German philosophy. Uh, he said that we have the mind and the mind cannot see. And we have feelings that cannot think. But only if they together, working together, we will have knowledge. And what we need, I think we need knowledge uh, today, a knowledge about emotions. Uh, what uh, another paradox I found uh, recently, a few years ago, I prepare article for the parents and um, I uh, found information that uh, in Stanford University, two psychologists, Sonia Lubomirsky and Julia Bohem, they make a study and they uh, um, look in how to happiness and uh, parenthood and behavioral motivation are connected. And they um, tested two hypotheses. First one was the feeling of happiness uh, in people increases when they realize basic human motives and uh, parenthood is one of them. A second, the feelings of happiness uh, itself um, charge the motivations um, share and the person wants to do something even more. And um, this was um, the, the authors uh, found confirmation of their hypothesis with one exception, and it was about parenthood. And I found information quite interesting. So the parents of children did not cause a storm of happiness in parents, but on the contrary, was uh, associated with a drop in life uh, satisfaction. Although very rarely someone 
um, admits uh, it openly. This phenomenon has been called the parental paradox. Um, and what is paradox? So the fact of the one hand, um, they usually want to become a parent, so we want to become a parent, and we talk about the desire to have a children, uh, about happiness, and um, studies show that people's life uh, satisfaction drops uh, dramatically when they have children. Mm, so it's um, something quite strange for me. And I start to look deeper. I found uh, this uh, uh, web page of uh, Sonia Lubomirsky, and I found very interesting facts. Uh, so for example, it was no studies on uh, 2010 uh, that calls um, parents uh, about parents. It was studies about memories and happiness. And it was absolutely different study. Um, and also Sonia Lubomirsky writing something like this. Disparate media reports, we found that parents actually experience more happiness and meaning that not parents. Um, and this also very interesting information for me because, uh, uh, you know, we now trust to scientific research, but apparently very important, especially if you're dealing with uh, emotions, very important to use critical thinking. Uh, and uh, we can see that uh, we don't have really proof information that parents uh, become a parents and their life dramatically changes, and they're not happy. It's one side. No, so we, we can see that especially fathers feel ha happier uh, after they give, uh, after they become a father. But the other side, exist phenomena like um, depression women have some some women has depression after they give birth it also exists so it's paradox it's really paradox and uh, I think we have to think about this and uh, also understand that not everything we can trust we can also think critically <clears throat> Now I want you to think about emotions and their place in the personality structure. This is for me, I think, very important uh, question. And what, generally speaking, what we know emotions. We know that emotions, um, it's a mental state, states um, brought uh, by neurophysiological changes uh, variously associated with thoughts, feelings, behavioral responses, and a degree of uh, pleasure or displeasure. And there is currently no scientific consequences on a uh, definition of emotions. And sometimes emotions mix with mood, temperament, personality, or other uh, psychological phenomena. So that's why I try today, we will try to separate this uh, and try to understand what is personality, what is and where place uh, of emotions in inside personality structure. And what I, today I will base my <clears throat> lecture on the uh, cultural historical theory of Vygotsky, because uh, I think if you study in Sweden, uh, you study in America psychology, you will be uh, familiar with lots of American um, ideas and researches uh, um, about emotions, but this uh, particular um, cultural historical theory of Vygotsky usually not well known, unfortunately. Why I want to share with you this information, uh, because uh, in my personal experience, I uh, studied this and I, I learned this myself and I studied this, uh, teach uh, students of these uh, ideas. And most important, when I become a mama, uh, this information helps me when I met my own emotions and <laughs> when I met my kids' emotions when they were small. So main ideas of... Uh, this um, theory that maybe we will not uh, talk about this uh, during the lecture, but I want to mention. Most important, it's zone of actual development and zone of proximal development. This is very important. Um, 
construct because uh, this show us how personality grew up and uh, also very important for us interiorization exteriorization it's how emotions go to conscience and subconscious because conscience and subconscious it's quite um, no how should i say it's uh, sensitive it's not gate so they go in and out and very important to understand how it's moving so we will talk about system of uh, psychological functions collective uh, collectively distributed activity development personality leading activity new growth uh, zone of actual development, zone of proximal development, interiorization, exteriorization. Um, also, very important concept in this uh, theory, uh, we're thinking about three concept activity, conscience, and personality. A main idea this personality cannot be appeared without activity. Activity is condition to build personality. It's very important. And for each age exists leading activity. It's very important to know and very important to organize for child this leading activity. When we do this, after a while, we will have a new growth. What it means, new growth? It's something that appeared suddenly. It was never before in child uh, personality or behavior. And this new growth shows us that this period finished and child can go to another period. And usually if we organize leading activity on this period, child give us positive emotion. Uh, if we doing something wrong, so child don't solve a task of this period, usually it shows us negative emotion. So we'll come back to this later on. I hope you will understand what I'm talking about. And the very important moment, if you have uh, questions, if something not understandable for you, please uh, feel free and try to questions under this uh, video. Because uh, first of all, if I will no answer, of course I will answer you if I have no correct answer. Uh, second, I have strong illusion that what I'm talking about, it's well known information. Everybody knows this and it's very easy. So for me, when I talk about this, it sounds for me, it's like, it's absolutely everybody knows this. But I think maybe if um, for someone who never studied this, it will be new information. I, I will be happy if you will understand this. So feel free, ask any questions, write them, and I will try to answer you later. So this information helps me go my puff as a mama and uh, um, try to teach myself to control my emotions and teach my kids to do this. So we on the way and this information I think quite can be quite helpful for you as well. That's why I want to share with you. So <clears throat> as I said, very important ideas of a good kid zone actual development and zone of proximal development. What it means? It means that child, even newborn child, uh, have something that uh, he can do on self, independent, and uh, child doesn't need any help. And Vygotsky called this zone of actual development. Usually for newborn child, it's something like reflection, yes, second reflection or so on. Later on, if you want to develop uh, Vygotsky, idea was that very important to organize uh, environment that task, next task for development will be inside zone of proximal development. What it means? It means that in task inside zone proximal development, child cannot solve on self, but child can solve if someone will help him a little bit or her. If a task will be inside zone of actual development, it's will connect it with bored and generally speaking, born, it's not positive emotion. Uh, if task will be outside zone of proximal development, it can make fr frightened, child can be frightened because it can looks for child impossible to solve. So this is very important to give child the task inside zone of proximal development. And that's why I try to say you that if this task inside this zone of proximal development, usually child very happy to solve this, really happy. Uh, child, generally speaking, wants to develop 
one child wants to be independent. It's maybe child didn't say, but some kids three or four years old, they say, don't decide for me. I do myself. So it's very important to help child to develop. And for this, very important to uh, offer child some kind of tasks. It's task. It's not task for mathematics or something. It's task of life. It's something, study something new. It can be tied to shoelaces or eat porridge himself or draw or make something from play or whenever it can be very simple task but it's something you cannot do before and now you can do this after i'll help you a little bit it's also connected with uh, counting with uh, um, writing different languages it's also connected with uh, independent thinking but it's already beyond of our <laughs> subject of our lecture so we will not talk about this so we will see that <clears throat> zone actual developments uh, expand to the zone proximal development and this how it's uh, development moving um also very important information i think about emotions that uh, emotions are fundamentally of a mental plan because on base of emotions a person a person sets himself the whole variety of tasks, including the mental one. So we talk about Kant and now this ideas, I think it also can be useful because emotions, first of all, we cannot maybe understand all our emotions, but without emotions, we really will not do nothing and we will not solve, not even solve, not even um, set task uh, for ourselves. So, as I said, <clears throat> in this uh, cultural historical theory, we have three very important uh, concepts, activity, conscience, and personality. You can compare them, you know, like three top of mountains. So from each mountain, you can see different point of view. But uh, as a result, it's the same landscape. So you you it's the same map yes the same area but different point of view because it's very important uh mountain it's activity very important conscience of course subconscious it's connected and very important uh, mountain top of mountain personality but they are connected of course they are connected to each other so first we will try to understand activity what is activity uh, in this theory uh, we are thinking about that activity is a chain uh, and it's connected uh, with a few concepts and you cannot swap them. So all activity has a one pattern. So every st everything starts with needs and I uh, said over here needs number one, needs number two, um, only because we have problem with um, translation in uh, Ukrainian language for this needs number two, we have special word. So I cannot, uh, in English, in, 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 in Sweden, it's the same word needs needs but it's not the same so i'll try to explain you <clears throat> if you're talking about maslow you know this yes uh, needs and we have basic needs and we have on top uh, self-realization and think about this basic needs generally speaking if i'm human being i need to eat time after time it's needs number one i need to eat but i'm not hungry all the time so when I feel I'm hungry, it's become needs number two. So I feel emotionally that I, I'm, I'm hungry or I'm thirsty. The same with self-realization. We're talking about, oh, it's very good to self-realization. It's very good for develop personality. It's really good, but not all person uh, feels they need this. So when I feel I need this, this is become needs number two. So it's, I hope you understand the difference, needs number one, needs number two. And needs number one, it's generally speaking. Yes, it's this what Maslow tried to explain us, but needs number two, it's already mine. I feel hungry. I feel I need self-realization. I feel I need to develop my personality or something. Uh, next, uh, 
construct its motivation. Motivation, as I said already, it's based on emotions. So we will not do nothing without emotions and uh, most basic emotions probably it's what I mentioned already, it's fears and curiosity. So if I'm curious, I will do lots of things. If I'm interested with something, I will do a lots of things. Or if I really, really frightened, I also will do lots of things. So it's it's life, you know, it's combined somehow um, in our life. And, but I think it's very interesting to understand ourselves and understand what based on my motivation, but what based on my motivation, why I do this. Maybe I, I'm I frightened and to be a bad parent. Maybe I'm curious and I want to understand my child better. I think both of them exist in our life. What do you think about this? Right for me, this it's very interesting to listen your opinion about this. And <clears throat> next part of this chain, it's goal. So after we have motivation, only after that we can set a goal for, for yourself. And usually we set a goal but sometimes someone set a goal for us and we fulfill someone else's goals. I think very important if we know how to, you know, our motivation and we can set a goal for ourselves. Uh, after we do assessment of the result and after we do correction. And very important, as I said, that you cannot swap. So it cannot be goal and after motivation or it cannot be needs after goal assessment and after motivation. So you cannot, it's pattern, it's one by one, it's chain. And also <clears throat> exists the analysis, planning, control, modeling, but it's uh, where we do correction, assessment, goal also we use in this uh, function. If you remember, we mentioned this uh, word about functions. And very important to understand <clears throat> border, where conscience is. No, I wanted to just ask you a question, but now <laughs> you have answer. You have uh, this border. So border in uh, between motivation and goal. So everything what connected with needs and motivation, it's subconscious. Uh, everything what connected with goal, assessment, correction, analysis, planning, control, modeling, it's conscience. And if we imagine uh, this um, metaphor, uh, iceberg, yeah? So we know that uh, biggest part of iceberg, we cannot see, it's under the water, it's biggest part. And usually psychologists using this metaphor to show conscience and subconscious, yes? So what we cannot see, we usually we don't understand our motives and don't understand our real real needs, especially nowadays when we have a lot of technology. And this technology built for us not hundreds, thousand artificial needs. So maybe I don't need this iPhone, but now everything around and advertisement and marketing, and now I need this. Maybe I don't need this exactly car, but if I trapped with marketing strategy and everything, you know, and now I need this, or maybe I don't need this in reality. So do you understand what I try to say? So it's very important to understand your own needs, your own motives. And um, so, <clears throat> No, of course, uh, this question, where the place of emotions? No, I think you understand that uh, emotions live uh, in subconscious, in this ocean uh, where biggest part of our um, soul uh, appeared. So motivation connected with emotions and we are swimming inside um, uh, emotions. It, this is what I try to say to you when I try to explain the difference between needs number one and needs number two. So emotions labels needs. So when I feel I need this, it's already emotions appeared in my life and can be trigger of my activity. So emotions, it's something like uh, ocean <laughs> and uh, it's uh, 
place of subconscious. Of, of course, to uh, study emotions, better to be good equipped, yes? It's good to have uh, some special equipment and special uh, uh, oxygen on your back and understand the rules, yes? How to dive and don't dive too deep and come back with information and use this information when you are conscious. Yes, so I uh, so I think this metaphor it's connected with critical thinking and knowledge. This will try to do now. We try to equip, <laughs> to uh, prepare equipment and fill our balloons with oxygen, and after we can do a few a few exercises and maybe the next lecture we can already be ready to dive a little bit, <laughs> not too deep. Um, so. We try to understand activity, what it means. We try to understand that this is chain uh, with uh, only one pattern, it cannot be changed. Uh, we try to understand conscience, uh, subconscious, and now personality. Uh, if we <clears throat> imagine this chain needs motive, goal, assessment, and correction, and can you imagine that um, this chain um, re re revolved around one stable group of motivations. For example, this motivation associated with our biological nature. Uh, and we can try to call this self one, or it can be I biological. So everything connected with my body and uh, a lot of things we don't know if you already uh, agree with me that we we'll have a lot of information about our body function. We are not controlling this, for example, our blood system, our lots of things we are sleeping, we not control ourselves. So our body really fantastic, um, I don't know how to call this object, it's not object, but it's uh, have uh, also animal uh, nature. It's very important we have instinct and uh, we have a lot of instinct that uh, help us uh, survive. So this is good actually. Uh, and also biological, uh, our biological um, self, it's very important to investigate. And for kids, it's very also important to control body, yes, to control fingers, to control, to drive a bicycle, to swim, to run, to do exercise, to understand how my body can move. I think it's very important to understand our body and we can do this all our life and uh, <clears throat> investigate this. And also this, uh, my biological, of course, connected with uh, my biological instinct. I want to eat. I need to. Now I don't want to eat. But generally speaking, if I'm human being, I must to eat time after time. But uh, not a lot. But generally speaking, it's necessary. As long as we are not just soul, we are body, and we have to feed ourselves to be healthy. So if we imagine this <clears throat> activity chain revolved around the one stable group of motivation, motivation associated with our biological nature, we can call this self one. So core of this part of our personality is the group of mot motifs associated with our biological or animal nature. So this is will be a biological or first part of personality, but can be another part of personality, also another chain and another group of motives. We are not only eating, we're not only hungry, we're not only animals, we're also curious and we also want to know, we want to know how to vote, um, construct, we want to know lots of things, especially kids. If you have toddlers, you know how child wants to investigate this world where he appeared. He wants to know everything. He tried in his mouth. He wants to understand. He's curious. And this curiosity, very important to, to support uh, to this curiosity, grow up to the interest. And maybe uh, about 12, 15 years, 17 years old, it will be quite strong interest to some kind of I don't know, subject uh, and uh, maybe 18 years old, if we will keep this interest, uh, our child will understand what kind of profession he will use because he will strongly interested with some kind of 
subject. So curiosity, it's very important. And on this curiosity, built our intelligence and our IQ, intelligence and ability to be, um, uh, to do reflection. What it means, it means that um, person can go out yourself and look on yourself, yourself from the side. So this is another chain of activity uh, around another stable group of motivations, the motivation connected with our intellectual nature. And of course, it must be grow up. Uh, we, we can try to call this self tool. And the core uh, of this part of our personality is a group of motives associated with the ability of person to get out of yourself and look at himself from the side without emotions. So only critical thinking. Okay, so let's call this, I'm interested. Yes, I'm interested, I reflexive. So this is part number two. And it can be, for example, another group of motivation uh, that connected with our social motives. For example, the core of this part, our personality is group of motives associated with the person's ability to sympathize, empathy with another. I think you will agree with me if uh, I will say that my biological um, motivation when I want and my uh, motivation connected is I must to do this for my child as a parent or for someone else because I feel sympathy. It's something different. Yes. So my biological, it's more egoistic. I must to feel myself, I feed myself and take care about myself. Uh, when I do something to my, for someone else, generally speaking, maybe I don't want this, but I want this because I feel I must do this. And I understand that it's not even, it can be understand, but it's also feeling, feeling sympathy and feeling empathy. It's like you grow your another one inside your soul or you didn't. So it's another group of motive, motivation. And let's call this I social uh, group of uh, part of personality number three. So what we have as a result, we have some kind of model of personality, yes? One part is my biological, I want motivation and lots of emotions connected with this. Another part, it's I reflexive, I'm interested, it's another group of motivation. When I'm hungry and I'm curious, it's different part of motivation, I agree with me. And also we have um, part number three, I'm social, and I must, and I feel like I must, and it's another group of motivation. So generally speaking, maybe you know this um, poem from La Fontaine about uh, fish, uh, swan, and council that pulling on different direction. So this structure quite dramatic and um, very easy to refuse uh, of one, of two, part of this personality and make uh, structure easier. Uh, but ideally, of course, very important to keep all these parts um, and um, of personality and uh, make them connected to each other. Not so easy, <laughs> easy to say and draw this picture than to do, but it can be also another uh, part of discussion. So <clears throat> what I'm talking about, I'm talking about of um, the apology of personality that uh, done uh, in uh, Kharkiv uh, Karazin University uh, to professors uh, Dusevitsky Sirida, and you can see that uh, mathematically you can see that very easy to ref um, uh, refuse to grow one or two and even three part of personality. As a result, we can see seven parts, seven types of personality, and uh, we can call them traps on the way of development personality. And you can we can see that number eight, it's when we try to keep all these three. Why we need this all these three? We'll try to answer this question later on. Uh, so this is two professors from Karazin University. Uh, it's my uh, teachers, unfortunately, they already not with us. So 
I try to, to share this information, what they taught us in university. So when we, <clears throat> sorry. When we come back to this metaphor about iceberg, you can try to put this model on conscience, subconscious, and we can see that um, not everything we can understand in all, even these three parts. Not, not sometimes we don't understand why we're doing something for ourselves. We sometimes don't understand why we're doing something for other people. And um, generally speaking, more or less we understand why we're interested with something, but it's also not, not really. So it's lots of information hidden inside our subconscious. Okay, so <clears throat> let's try now to swim a little bit in swimming pool and try to talk about five types of uh, emotional management. Um, let's imagine situation, let's do a model. So let's imagine uh, that exists some situation, some kind of situation that annoys you connected with your child, for example. I try to you to write this uh, in the beginning of our lecture. And this is a situation and this really annoys you. And uh, for example, you have some kind of vas and it uh, feels with emotions and your good condition, maybe it's empty, but with time, the situation continue and uh, you can feel emotions more and more situation continue. As a result, you start already boiling and last drop and now what kind of um, way how you will react i think <clears throat> model number one it's easiest part what you can say that it can splash out explode and um, let off first steam but because we are not only one we are connected with others for our child for example let's think about benefits for ourselves and benefits for others. Yes, for our child or someone who will live with us. So all kind of reaction got benefits for us and for others. For example, first reaction, splash out. Um, what do you think for yourself? It will be benefit, all kind of benefit. I think when you explode and steam out, it's a little bit easier, yes, after you do this. But later on, you can feel guilty and uh, later on, you can feel not comfortable. And of course, for for child or for others, it will be not, not uh, positive benefits. Okay, let's think another model. Model number two, what we can else, what else we can do with our emotion that's already ready to explode. We can hold back or close them. Yes, we can put lead and on top we can put cement or big stone and we can close emotions because we understand it's not good to steam, put steam out. Let's think about benefits. For myself, I think you know that it will be not good because if you not express yourself and you continue using only this strategy, that uh, it can cause even some problem with body, at least headache, or at least you will be not happy because you're not express yourself. For other, it can be positive because if you close nicely, you lead the others will not know nothing about your emotions. So they will not have information about how you feel yourself, are you happy or not happy. So it looks like positive, but uh, maybe it's also not positive because you're not honest and uh, it also can be later on when, for example, you, this leads will jump out, others will be surprised, yes? So, okay, now model number three, <clears throat> exists the idea that it's possible to express emotions honestly and adequately. How to do this? Uh -huh. for, for, for yourself, you express yourself honestly and adequately, it can be good. And for others, it looks also good. How to do this? Uh, it's the easiest way. I think you know this. It's use I am messages and use temporal language. So what it means, it's instead of say, you are plus label plus consonant language, uh, you 
you are so, you are such, always you, again you, etc. You can say about your feelings, about the situation. And instead of using uh, a consonant language, you use in temporal language. What it means, you use in word then. When temporal language, it is not permanent, but tied to the certain time and certain situation. So we can have a formula when plus situation, when it's temporal language, plus situation, situation you are doing this and that, and plus I'm messaging, I message. I message, it's I'm talking about my feelings. I feel that I become, so you're talking about your feelings or state of mind about the situation, not about person. We're talking about situation, this situation, try me met, yes. And for example, maybe it will be easier. For example, when you doing, uh, when you don't hear me, I'm offended. When you broke that vase, I got angry. When you stepped on my foot, it is hurts. When you scream like that, I'm scared. When you pulled your sister's hair, or cat's tail, I feel sad. So you can try to train in, in your particular situation and try to express your emotions this way. So it's not really uh, difficult, it's just to, um, to understand one time and uh, after practice a little bit and uh, it's, it's working. Maybe you know this, so let me know if this information well known for you or maybe it's new information for you. And <clears throat> exists also model number four, avoiding emotions. It's quite a um, uh, big uh, group of managing emotion. And uh, I put question marks about benefits for myself and for others. I think you will understand why. For example, it can be compensated care, secondary benefits. It can be escape to virtual reality. It can be redirect, uh, distancing or exist to the comfort zone, so freezing the ability to uh, emphasize. So what it means, number one, uh, compensated care, it's when I have secondary benefits and I go to uh, some kind of, for example, I don't want to even deal with emotions. When uh, pattern, when uh, model number two, when I close myself, I understand that I don't want uh, steam out. But in this case, I don't want to even deal with my emotions. And better, I will use my strategy. For example, I will eat something tasty, or maybe I will drink something, or I will do all kind of compensation, or escape to virtual reality. It's also understandable. Redirect it can be quite good when you go to do sport or maybe you are, when you are angry, you can pull your um, pillow or something or, or cut a piece of paper. Uh, Distancing, it's really, really, you don't want to deal with your emotions and you, you just turn around and go to other way, not even talk about emotions. It's also possible. And also sometimes we know that uh, exist phenomena, well, they call this uh, Peter Pan uh, strategy when uh, adults doesn't want to grow up uh, and uh, they um, try to be as child as, as long as possible and don't want uh, consciently deal with the emotions. So all kind of uh, way to avoid an emotions, it's also possible. And, uh, you know, uh, you cannot say, we will talk about this a little bit later, but I just try to mention this group of uh, ability to how to avoid emotions. And exist also interesting uh, model that um, I had experience one year in Ukraine, I uh, <clears throat> teach uh, psychology for special program for kids uh, of fifth class. And I use only three type of management emotion. And I ask them when we finish with this uh, situation and this ways explanation, and I ask them, oh, maybe you know more uh, type of management emotion. And they said to me, yes, you can change your attitude to the situation. 
And this is, you know, it's written in all kinds of uh, um, wisdom books, but kids taught me this. And it's really very important to hear a child because they uh, philosophers and they give us lots of tips and lots of good information if we listen, we know to listen to them. So change your attitude to the situation it also can be a good strategy. So what do we have as a result? We have five types of emotional management and these types can be good or bad, uh, have good or bad benefits for us, one second. Sorry. So we have first splash out, hold back, express emotions honestly and adequately, avoiding emotions and change your attitude to a station. And I want to ask you what type of emotions management is best. Sorry. <clears throat> so I hope if you say that all of these types are can be useful, it depends on situation. I think you're right. Because you know, sometimes this situation that it's good to splash out, sometimes good to hold back. <clears throat> But I think very important to be flexible and health, have in your practice all these five types of managed emotions. Sorry. Now I want to come back to this um, model of personality. So it's very important to understand that exist can be a few zones of actual development and a few zones of proximal development. So most important, it's uh, personality. It's not something stable. It's something that moving all the time and can be developed. And we have also, <clears throat> uh, age periodization in uh, this concept of cultural historical theory of Vygotsky. And uh, on this table, you can see that when child was born, it looks like, you know, personality, but uh, uh, like a seed, everything inside. And child must go through lots of activities leading activities for each age to, as a result, I hope that about 15, 18, uh, he will, child will have this structure. Three parts of personality, ability to understand their self, <clears throat> their body, uh, reflection, critical thinking, and also ability to sympathy to other people and um, help other people also and live with other people, <clears throat> make uh, connections. <clears throat> Sorry, my voice is not working today. So we're talking about age two and a half, six years old, and we can see that uh, leading activity in this age very important that child in this age uh, play a lot is um, develop the small <clears throat> ability to touch and also game, not computer game, 
Uh, it's not a type of uh, lecture, maybe. So it's a game where a child can put role on himself or herself, and also can child can uh, feel a border, border of uh, their um, character, because exactly games can teach child to control the emotions. We will talk about this in second lecture. So. <clears throat> Uh, child age and emotions connected this way that if we will let child go through these steps um, gradually step by step we will uh, child will give us a lot of positive emotion because child maybe he cannot a child cannot explain you but please try to understand this lecture as a child suddenly can try to talk to you and explain what he wants Child doesn't want only chocolate and online games. Child wants to be developed and child wants to be independent. And what's the problem, main problem that causes most emotions, negative emotions between child and adult? Think what about this? The most important is integrity. Child come to this world integrity so everything potentially inside child it's not grow up but potentially its ability to understand ability to be curious ability to to feel sympathy its ability it's very important to grow this ability and <clears throat> but it's inside child and integrity it's very important characteristic of personality because we are really happy when child appeared in this world but <laughs> Very important to understand that with age, especially 2.5, child lose this integrity and start to grow up a different part of his personality or her personality. It's very important to understand that this is normal process. And to do that, child must to be attend to lots of activity. But adults already got these abilities, three of them. And most important for adult, it's to find quiet place and in, to build from these parts new integrity. Do you understand what I mean? So it's <coughs> effort of development between for kids and adults does not match their opposite. So we use in our time to be quiet and build new integrity of personality are for child very important to do lots of activity and let these parts of personality grow up so that make a lots of emotions because we are not the same uh, vector of uh, this vector is not much and this i think it's question of just time management so we can organize for child if you understand this we just organize for child time and activity they can do what they want and take a, take care about ourselves and uh, let us also sit in quiet place and try to put our parts of personality and build new integrity for uh, in a new age in our uh, age period so <clears throat> this is what i tried to say how to connect a, child, a child's age and emotions. I try to say to you, and I will repeat again, that a child very happy and will pay us back a lot of positive emotions when we will let child to solve task of development that um, child has for every age period. So for two, three years old, leading activity, it's object manipulation. So a lot of things to try to, 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 to draw, to salty dough, play with salt, salty dough to uh, lots of activity with uh, physical activity to run, to ride, to swim. And uh, why this is important? Because this way child suddenly understand that this body and he's separate from the moms. Before two and three years old, sometimes child not separate mentally from the mom. And when he separate himself from the mom, he can say, 
I myself and refused to accept help what he done when he was one, two years old. And we can call, call this like uh, it's character change. And he become before he was so friendly. And now character change, it's like change, baby. Suddenly he start to show character and I cannot talk to him. He said, no, no, I will do myself. I will do myself. This is myself. It's very important. It shows us that this period pass and a child now like, you know, it's like, um, I can imagine flow and uh, sheep was on the floor. It was small, small stream. And suddenly two years old captain wake up. Captain, yes. So it's like conscience. Yes, conscience wake up. And it's a very good sign. And <clears throat> uh, age of... Uh, 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 four, five, six years old, a leading activity, it's uh, all kind of games. Again, not virtual games, alive games. And um, games teach child to uh, volitional behavior when child can control his behavior and his emotions on self. Because we can do a lot of lectures for child, but if a child, kids will play to each other and they will uh, discuss rules. And after, if they will start to play and suddenly break the rules and another kids will not play with him, this is the most important lesson for child. And we will talk about this in the second lecture also. So uh, what's a big difference be between age and uh, three, five, uh, three, four, five, and six years old? It's the child on this age um, immediately responds to situations. So it's immediately to contain emotions. Uh, <clears throat> in about seven years old, it's uh, just attempts to contain the emotions. So don't wait from child three, four, five years old that he can control the emotions. It's simply impossible, child cannot do this. So just, I think it's very important to know that you will not disappoint it. And uh, what I wanted to finish with, it's, uh, I think it's very interesting when, uh, you know, what I start with that we have now a lot of information, lots of data about uh, <clears throat> chemical, biochemical um, <clears throat> connections of emotions, what kind of uh, chemical uh, reactions we have in our brain when we have become angry or we become happy. And um, maybe you know that the, the Dalai Lama sometimes meeting with scientists from American scientists and uh, uh, try to ask uh, them, not, not even ask, he said that uh, we very important to uh, found the scientific uh, proof and show people that it's very important to show that, uh, to feel positive, try to not feel positive, uh, try to cultivate positive emotions. It's more healthy and uh, productive than uh, feel and uh, collect negative emotions. So Dalai Lama said, I want to find scientific studies on the <clears throat> importance of peace of mind and compassion. So, <laughs> Uh, what we know about uh, can, how we can answer question, can emotions be controlled or not? There is idea that uh, people cannot, person cannot control emotions, but um, mm, person can control the states. But uh, as I said to you in the beginning, that very important to ask questions to our brain how to control emotions. This is a trick because when you start this question to our brain, our brain starts to thinking about this and we will have the answer later or not. So I propose you to ask questions to yourself also. How can I solve my problem? How can I manage to my emotions? How can I manage uh, emotions with my child, et cetera, et cetera? Because this is a way and this is a trick when you start question. So you not give up. You don't say, oh, I cannot control emotions. When you say how to do this, uh, you will find the answer. 
Thank you very much for your attention. And if you have questions, uh, I will happy to answer if I know the answer. Uh, it seems as if we don't have any questions. Uh, and uh, in a way, I guess that's a good thing. <laughs> So you get to uh, uh, rest your voice, Marina. Sorry, sorry, really sorry about No, no, no problem. That's <laughs> uh, what happens. And uh, uh, so um, thank you uh, for, uh, for viewing us. And as I said at the beginning, this is uh, the first out of two lectures. The next one will be on the 2nd of June. And Marina will be back then. Uh, and uh, of course, we would be very happy for you to like and follow our channel. channel. Uh, so thank you for listening and good night.